Otis Livingston from uh, CBS News New York. Um, Senator Bradley, thank you for giving us a few moments on what has to be a difficult day for you on the passing of your former teammate and good friend, Willis Reed. And I know a lot of people will talk about the basketball exploits, but I want to talk about him as a man. What did Willis Reed mean to you as a man? Uh, he had incredible strength and dignity. And he carried himself with both of those for his whole life. And that was fundamental to his leadership of the team and fundamental to his own drive to excel. And he was, to me, the epitome of the captain, of a captain of a team, yeah. of, of a leader of men. How did he exude that on a day-to-day -day basis when you were a teammate Well, first of all, he uh, let you know who was boss. <laughs> For example, my rookie year, uh, he called me Bradley all the time. He called everybody else by their first name. So I went to him one day and said, hey, Wills, how about call me by my first name like you do everybody else? He looked at me and said, okay, Bradley. <laughs> I was, he, An imposing he was figure. He know who boss was. That's right, an imposing yeah, figure, but of course wall, had, had a kind heart. Here. You know that picture? That's oh, yeah. Jumping into Willis's arms in 1973. And we saw a lot of tr tremendous pictures as we were uh, going through uh, some photos of those great Nick teams that you and Willis were a part of. And you guys, you too were a part of a lot of those pictures, smiling, laughing, having a good time. But... Talk about the seriousness as well, like when you guys took the court. I mean, you meant business. Well, yeah. I mean, we wanted to be champions, and we were champions. And you don't get to be that yep. unless you're serious. <laughs> and yeah. uh, we were yeah. serious in our unselfishness and seriousness in our dedication to the game and to our, each other. And um, we wanted to win, and we did. And Willis was a fundamental part of that because you always knew whatever happened, he always had your back. Uh, I remember yeah. <laughs> I remember in Atlanta one night there was an altercation and became a free-for-all. And, of course, everybody was running to Willis because he wanted Willis to take care of everybody. <laughs> That's tremendous. Take me back to 1970, Game 7. Uh, people are unsure whether Willis is going to come out, if he's going to be able to play in the game. And he said later on that there was no doubt in his mind that he was going to play in that game. But what did that mean for you as a teammate and for the New York Knicks fans to see him limping out of the tunnel and then start off the game the way well, that he did? Well, when we uh, left the locker room, uh, I wasn't uh, sure he was going to play. The busher said he was, and we probably knew he was going to get a shot and he'd come out. So, but we didn't know. And so when he came out, you saw the Lakers, uh, Will Chamberlain, Jerry West, and Elgin Baylor just stop practice and watch Willis walk onto the floor and watch him take a shot. And they, they wanted to assess how, whether he was back or not. So the game started, mm -hmm. the first two plays practically down the court. Willis uh, was at the 15-foot line, and uh, Chamberlain hung back. Willis shot, made both of them. And that's all it took. The garden crowd went crazy. Yeah. Walt Frazier had the best seventh game in the history of the NBA. The rest of us did well, and we became world champion. But we did that in large part, A, because of what the year was and how dedicated we were to each other and how well we played together, but also because of Willis's courage. He put it all on the line for his teammates. Yeah, and you talked about uh, Walt's uh, performance in that. It's often overlooked because a lot of times when you talk about that game, that series, it's about Willis coming out of the locker room. But, of course, Walt had that great game. But uh, yeah, yeah, how much yeah, of an inspiration well, was that, that was for you guys? That was a lot of inspiration. And Frazier, he, he had, uh, I think, 34 points. I once introduced him. I said, the seventh, greatest seventh game, 34 points, 12 rebounds, and he said, and seven assists. <laughs> so he always lets you know who's who, what he does as well, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, well, it was what? it was a great uh, great moment. I think in New York sports history, it's rated as number two behind Bobby Thompson's home run. But that that's back in the mm. Paleolithic era, so I'm sure he watching yeah, right. understands what that is. Yeah. Um, thank you once again for for hey, joining us and our deepest condolences. But what does 
What are your emotions today as you think about your, your friend and well, your former teammate, uh, Willis Reed? You know, when Gail called me this morning, I was in Central Park walking. And I just, you know, sat on a concrete bunker and cried. And um, wow. that's what you do when you lose somebody you love. Yeah. Ooh, thank you so much for your time. And uh, once again, our deepest condolences. Thank you. Thanks for honoring. Thank you.